Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Trust and Believe. I'm your host, Sean T, and I am super excited about today's guest, Dallas Velasquez. You all know her as a Beachbody Super Trainer, but I'm telling you right now, she is going to talk to you about overall wellness, the struggles that she went through to get to where she is today, and more on why I love her program, 30 Day Breakaway. Get ready to trust and believe. Somebody say it again. No, no, no. What's up? You better than Oprah. Come on, y'all. This is Sean T, and it's time to trust and believe. Can I just tell you something that I am freaking out about you okay you yeah she's like what so first of all you know we had our initial like interaction first interaction at summit like what two years ago whenever we could i was pregnant yes (laughs) yes you were pregnant and so i was just like just enamored by who you were just kind of like your energy your soul like you know the internal like i feel energy like that and you know then i was like i need to do some research on this woman so I'm like, I'm like, I want to know more about you because it was just like you were just so you just had like a powerful but like easing spirit, right? And then I realized what the connection was. Yes. I did not know prior to all of that that you were a true runner, like you were a professional runner, and we need to talk about that because so. I'm like up there doing your program and I am like living. I am living. I had a phone call the other day and we were like, oh, we want to film you working out and we want to do this. And they were like, you know, just talking about what workouts I want to do. I'm like, I want you to film me doing 30 day breakaway. Oh my God, that's amazing. Thank you. Because people, you know, people see me dancing. They see me doing my thing, but they never see me really doing like other things that I love. And I was like, 30 day breakaway and bar blend is what you need to film me doing because everyone sees me on TikTok shaking my ass. Right. So (laughs) anyway, I just need to talk about that. Like I am just like so inspired and I don't know how many people know about your backstory, but if you can just talk about you you for a second. And I also learned that you were a track star (laughs) <laughs> when Carl said that uh, after you share a uh, run and when you were doing 30 day breakaway. Uh, but yes, um, my background, obviously um, I grew up with my dad. My dad was a PE teacher and he was a former athlete. So even though um, he, I had a brother too, it was the three of us that grew up together. He was never into sports. So since I was four years old, my dad was like, I was always doing sport. That was the ultimate tomboy. And I just fell in love with running um when I tell you that I used to spend all of my recess I was that weird girl that girls didn't want to hang out I was always with the boy and I'm not kidding elementary school I spent my recess trying to find people to raise me and it got to the point that boys were like they didn't even want to raise me anymore I'm like I'll give you a heads up like and it was just like I was that hardcore (laughs) so by the time I was 12 I went to a specialized school that um it develops athletes in the island. So you live there from Sunday to Friday, and then you graduate, you go seven on to senior year in high school. So to me, that was like my my first love, my passion. And then it opened a lot of opportunities. Um, it's obviously easier to keep it real, like to make the national team in Puerto Rico, like it is to a country like United States. So I was very blessed since I was 14, 15, that I started traveling to represent the island. And I got like sponsorships and scholarship. And it was just like my life. Um, however, I was a long jumper. I was the laziest girl. I hated the pain. So I could do hills all day. So I was do, I, I would do like a hundred meter hurdles and I was just, uh, my event was the long jump. So I didn't transition into like a distant runner until a few years ago, uh, after spending many years that I was not, I couldn't run. I had a bad injury, so I had to retire. And it was after, being able to not experience running at all for more than three years that I kind of like, I started running more and doing the ex- the workouts like similar to 30 day breakaway. Oh my goodness. Let's talk about your injury for a second, because there are a lot of people listening right now that, you know, something happened, either an injury, 
physically or they're going through a mental struggle and you know it's and you hear it all the time I'm sure about a lot of people who want to work out and they can't find that motivation because of something that happened and so like tell us what happened and like what was the process of you kind of like maneuvering your way yeah so for me it wasn't just one injury it was a series of um there was a lot of things that was that were part of it. One was the nutrition. I was a, a you know, I was very ignorant about nutrition in the island. You don't grow up eating vegetables. And even the food that I have available, that was just like basic like rice, beans. I didn't even eat beans. So I was that picky eater. So I was obviously like pushing my body too hard. And by the time I was in college, like I started it started catching up. I started getting injuries. Um then I was in a car accident and uh I was just crazy. I didn't follow up with some of the, I went to the urgent, uh, the emergency room, but they, they only took like an x-ray. I do remember like my neck was pretty messed up after that. There was definitely a trauma, but we didn't found out that it was something worse until three to four years later when I was 24 years old. By then I already had my first daughter and I started experiencing like numbness in my arms, migraines. I would woke up some days and I couldn't move my neck. Um, and then because everything is connected that, started uh, my hamstrings were blowing up consistently and you know when you're a sprinter when you're a jumper you just can't have ass stuff like you have to do it so it got to that point that even though in every single comeback that I would have like I was jumping 21 feet in practice like I was really getting strong and that was just making it more heartbreaking so I kept pushing and even my coach were like then we're just only training the water and I'm like but that's not going to translate like we need to do plyos we need to do things so after seeing two different specialists, I was recommended like, you need to stop running. Your neck looks like somebody that's over 60 years old. Um, it's a really bad shape. Um, the discs were starting to press the spinal cord. And then um, that's when I kind of like stopped exercising altogether. So it was pretty traumatic because I never had a plan B. That was all I knew it was a, my identity. I'm a very passionate person. I know you're like that too. Um, and one of the reasons that I love you, that you're so authentic and real and you would not do anything unless you're all in. So for me, that was my life. So I felt like anything, even though it is funny because even though I was married, I had a daughter. I'm like, what? Like, I felt like, what am I going to do now with my life? <laughs> so <laughs> it was just a mess. Um, but then it also let me that transition of, um, led to, wow, like hitting rock bottom a few years after that. And not just physically, but my health, my mental health, my second postpartum. And that's actually what led me to become a trainer and, and start educating myself. It led me to find Beach Body. Um, I, that's how I discovered at home workouts. And so it was one of those things that, yeah, yeah, there was a season in my life that I never thought it was going to get better. I never even imagined myself doing a push up again, lifting weights, running. Um, but it's just proof that when we start focusing on the things that we can and we get knowledge and we apply whatever it is, you know. You, you can get strong. You, you can get to the other side. Like doctors, as I, I love them, I respect them, but they don't always know it all. They, they don't, mm. you know, and I feel like sometimes they're so quick to give prognosis and things. And in my case, I definitely proved them wrong. Thank you so much for sharing that. Because as you know, people who may just pop by your Instagram or just, you know, maybe try 30 day breakaway just to be like trying something new they may, you know, just kind of look at your physique and look at where you are now and not really understand the struggle that you had to overcome to get where you are. And I don't know, I just, people might look at this as a testimonial for 30 Day Breakaway, but I don't care because I'm just going to keep it real. I just remember, I, I just remember the first time I tried it and I, you know, I was just excited to run and I was excited just because it was you, right? Just generally, I was like, yeah. this is fun. But I put, I put in my AirPods because I was somewhere where I couldn't go outside and run. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll get on the treadmill. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, it was just, it was just like, it it takes running. Like, for me, I was on the treadmill. I wasn't outside. But it made running on a treadmill just like this incredible experience because you were saying things. Like, you were guiding me through the run where typically sometimes when I'm running distance, you know, you get to that point where you're bored and your head starts to go and your form starts to break. Oh, and yeah. you just like really was, you like kept me on my path. And I just, I just enjoyed it so much. And then as I was uh, 
running and I was, you know, just doing it. And I started doing the workouts, the, you know, your lifting workouts and the strength workouts. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I was in the gym one day at a hotel with my mask on at the time. And like, <laughs> like this, this, this man came up to me. He's like, you know, are you Sean T? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, like you're doing your workouts. I was like, no, I'm doing the Dallas's workouts. And then, you know, we started talking about it. So that was really cool. But anyway, when I was, when I was doing a run, it, it, like one thing just kept coming back to me, you know, this from track and field, like in my book, I talk about the last 70 meters of a race, especially like a 400 meter. Cause I was a 400 meter hurdler oh my gosh. and how it, it, it is that point. And this is the, one of the reasons why I love that your program is called 30 day breakaway, because there's like, in the last 70 meters, you either break you or you your leg. Go. Like, yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, for those people out there who are pushing and they're trying their best and they, you know, they can't, somehow they're not able to commit. How do you get them to like really have that breakthrough, you know, because, you know, as a runner, as a motivator and a coach, you know, you, and you're so good at it. I just always wanted to know, like, what what is your way of teaching people to get through the breakthrough? Right. I, I definitely, I'm more like on the cheerleader side because I did have coaches that were really rough and I have a weird personality. I don't know if it was the way I was raised that I just get domestic, like I, I get very defensive. It doesn't work for people like me. Um, I'm also a person who gets, I used to get in my head. I was very insecure. I definitely doubted my potential and, and I, I feel like if it wasn't because of all the things that I went through and all the limited thoughts that I used to have that were holding me back. Um, I couldn't relate honestly to most people and especially all the dark moments that I went after not being able to move after losing my both physical and mental health for a period in my life. I couldn't relate to the normal person either because it's true to keep it real. I used to think that all my friends were athletes, everybody. I always grew up. I loved it so much. I just thought that people who didn't exercise, they just we're lazy. Uh, and mm-hmm. that includes my family. Everybody, nobody in my family exercises, by the way. Like, they're just amazing, but there is not a thing. So for me, it's just going through, like, what, what are the things that that I, I wish I heard growing up? What are the things that I wish, like, my coaches would tell me a little bit? And, uh, and I try to tell my clients and the people that do my programs, like, my main thing is just, like, focus on the things that you can do. Don't get distracted by the things that you cannot accomplish yet because – I feel like our mindset automatically just goes by, let's say that you did, you ran, like you said, 350 meters, but then you already crushed that. But then if you don't do the last 50 meters, amazing, you fixate in that. But hey, you did amazing the other part of the race. Like, and it's more like giving them the strategies, the tool, like that mental strength. Um, and that's seems to to hit home for most people um and when i went into filming the program i was definitely like i have a little notes and things and i was also like running like on my when i was doing the audios and getting into that place and from someone that does not doesn't come natural to do long distance i'm like i know how people feel so that's why i think it was hitting home like oh i know what to say i know what i feel i know approximately like 20 seconds left people are like slowing down and i'm telling you no, don't slow. No, I want you to go faster. Why? Because I know by now you're slowing down. Um, but I think it's that like um, if you're somebody who's doubting yourself, who's struggling, just focus on what you can do because it's just the only way to keep like kind of like celebrating those victories to keep um, moving forward, pushing forward and not just like, why? If you cannot do a push up yet, it doesn't matter. But maybe you can do 10 modified push ups. You're still working your, your body. You're still showing up. You're still doing something. If you cannot run, Two minutes straight yet, maybe you can run and walk those two minutes, like alternate, like little by little, you will get better. And I think that's just so, so important. Those are the things that at least it helped me. It helped like the people um, and just the little motivation here, or there that, but it has to be genuine. Like I don't believe in just saying random things just to say it. And I think that's the thing that is connecting with, with people, uh, at least the people who are doing my program. I, oh, I I love the last part you said, which is don't just say things that are random. And one yes. thing we have, we definitely have in common is, you know, people are, especially when, it, when, when I first started, when insanity came out, cause you know, that was a big, I would say my big monster, like intense hit program. And people would always say, you know, how do you know what to say? I'm like, because I feel 
the exact same way. Yes. And this is what I have to tell myself to get through. And so like, hello, in my opinion, that's the best way to motivate. And you don't have to like, we don't have to reach for the, the affirmation at that moment. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what we feel. And if we want to yeah. break through, then that's, that's how we're going to do it. Exactly. But you know, you said something really interesting and to me very powerful that I've been talking about lately. And I'm so glad you said it, how, you know, you're the only one in your family that works out, you know, like in terms of like, if you look at the broad scope of your family and me too, the majority of people, they have no interest in going to the gym. And I've been telling people that, you know, we live in this bubble of beach body or fitness, or we surround ourselves with like-minded people who love fitness and stuff like that. And we forget that there are a lot of people out there. The majority of people aren't getting up to work out. They're trying to get up, make ends meet, make money. And I, and I love that you talked about that because it's, it's not talked about. And, you know, I love that you also admitted that before you used to think that these people are lazy and you're like, no, like they need support. What made you really want to go into coaching knowing that you didn't like a lot of the ways that you were coached? So to me, like it was so normal that I didn't even thought about it. Honestly, I was just like the different one in my family, the athletes. Um, one thing though, that has made a powerful impact about, and even though the body positivity is a new thing now, growing up in Puerto Rico, people are pretty body positive. And just going to the beach, when I sent my family, they were overweight. Like most of them, most of my cousins, they are over overweight, like 60, 100. Some have had bariatric surgery. And I have all these beautiful memories of me being the skinny one, like shy to take my you know, be on my bathing suit at the beach and just seeing them like rocking their bikinis and feeling so much love and respect and admiration. And they are growing up with people who are not that into fitness and, and seeing this, you know, that, yeah, like nobody's not, not everybody's going to be a size two, a size four also helped me. Like I've never, even though I work in the industry, I've never been brainwashed into thinking like, Oh, that's not okay. That's, you know, like critiquing a female either. So it has given me like, to me, that's, it's normal too. Like, yeah, I, I can see a six pack lady and be oh, that's normal. But I can also be somebody who, you know, is a plus size. And to me, it feels very normal. And I don't see it with different eyes. And I'm grateful for that. And they taught me confidence. <laughs> they taught me to even embrace my body more. And and I love that. But um, in my case, uh, the hardest thing for coaching, like now they all ask me questions and things like that. But to be very honest, the hardest thing has been seeing some of my cousins going, battling cancer. My mom has cancer, like, and seeing them, most of my relative, like my dad, high blood pressure, my stepdad with diabetes and not, and the frustration of being that they don't want to make simple lifestyle changes. And there's just so much that I can do. And even though sometimes when I talk to them, they get a little bit motivated and they might make some changes, but I'm not there. And, and I understand it's really hard. They're already over 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, they have this life that they're used to, that it feels so familiar and making these changes are not easy. And most people don't understand, like uh, they would get very overwhelmed because they have this all or nothing mentality. So for me, that has has been the hardest thing, seeing um, the struggles that they go through. Um, and even though, yes, I inspire them, they they trust me, they believe me, they're not ready, they, they don't do it because they, they are. Uh, most of my family, everybody in my family, they rather just take the pills than do that. And that's been definitely the only one that has broken away. Well, I'm not using the word, but like, no, yeah, broken away from, yeah. from that. Like I made a decision when I was, I don't know if you know my full story, like the things that I went through after my second daughter, but it was really bad. Like for a year, like I was always on the ER, uh, doctor's offices, and they were prescribing me this crazy medication and this, and they were, and I was always having to do CAT scans and, and epidural and all these things. And I was just getting worse and worse and worse. So for me to be like, no, I need to fix the foundation. I need to start eating ready. Um, and it was through knowledge, um, because again, I was very ignorant about nutrition. It was by truly educating myself and little by little started applying that I was able to take control of the things that I could control and, and get my life back. But not everybody is ready. And the hardest thing is just to accept that, to respect that and still love them and still be there if they ask me questions. But being pushy or being judgmental is not, it doesn't work. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I love everything you talked about because I think that people really need the freedom to find their way and the acceptance of, at yeah. least as a, a trainer perspective and especially a family member who loves these people who have these struggles, you know, I've said it before, Rome wasn't built in a day. And I think one of the things that people who have may have lost weight or they may have found a healthier lifestyle, they forget that they too one time had to in some way have a hurt that last hurdle that they overcome to be able to make that consistent change in their life. You know, that's why like for me, fitness and, and similar to you, it's in no way about the six pack. It's about, for me, it's more about confidence and it's about transformation, but not necessarily physical transformation. It's the small transformations. And, you know, I don't know if that is our track and field mentality, because I think I, in track and field, you know, on track and field, everyone thinks that the gun goes off and your only idea is to cross the finish line first. And you're like, especially as hurdlers, you're like, no, uh, my blocks have to be lined up at the exact everything. same spot. I have this many steps between hurdles. Yes. I have to clear the hurdle like this. One one step off, it slows down my momentum. And, yes. and maybe we understand other people's journey because of that, you know? Yeah. And um, and I think in being an athlete too, yeah, we're more grateful about, we use movement in more empowering ways, like joy, like, like I know I was doing your program and I loved it. It's something completely different. And by the way, I am the worst friend. I haven't done any of my other <laughs> fellow people. Like you were the first sample work I did. Uh, I still told Megan every week, oh, I'm going to start doing your program. I haven't. Like, and I had so much fun. And even now, whenever, you know what I'm doing with your program too? Um, whenever I feel like, oh, I'll just put it up. I use it like a little bit as a warm up at the beginning and it changes my mood. This is a true story. I was telling my sister about it and my sister, she's actually doing it completely. But she also has moments that she wants to do any little, you know, something else. And she does that. And, and it's amazing. And for me, um, one of my messages with female is just like focus on the performance because um, the fitness industry definitely, it, tends, it has this unhealthy way of fixating mainly um, how you how you look and for some people it can take a year two or three years to look a certain way but in the meantime are you going to drive yourself crazy or are you going to feel like a badass like oh my god like i'm killing these push-ups like i'm i'm mastering this movement i'm learning i'm feeling stronger and that's that was also one of my messages when, when doing the program like let's focus on what you can do and let's do that well because you're going to keep coming back because you're going to feel like like when your program they feel joy they feel amazing they're still getting a crazy workout because you have me doing a I was cramping doing one of your, <laughs> you have to do like a plie squat thinking. The legs, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm aging. I'm like, I'm aging. I had like this weird cramp. I'm like, <laughs> it was hard. Um, so I think like, I definitely like to focus on the more like building a legit foundation, giving them the knowledge, explaining the whys and make them feel like, oh my God, I feel amazing. Yeah, they still didn't move. I still don't fit in the jeans that I want to, but I feel like I'm befriending my body by respecting it for all the things that it does for me and you know and for me too like i'm still don't even as a fitness beach body super trainer and the years that i've been in the industry i don't have it together at all with my nutrition some which some which you might see me like way more caught and lean other days you're gonna feel see me like not even a single app and that's okay that's not the reason why i keep doing my workouts i do it first of all I would never take my body for granted like I did those years. Um, and then going off to being in my mid-20s and not even being able to bathe my second daughter because I couldn't now ban and do all this great, like it was just ridiculous. So I'm always grateful. I appreciate the transparency, especially when it comes to the nutrition, because you know, I you love like you a good donut. donut. Too. I eat my donuts. <laughs> Every other day my daughter's like, are you going to order donuts? I can you know, uh, <laughs> and I love, you know, I love my donuts. I love, you know, I love going out to eat. I love my French fries. I think that one of the things that we have, which I think is really good. And, and I think what I'm about to say for me, I wish and hope is a foundation for a lot of people is like, enjoy your life. I have yeah. kids like these kids want to, they, they want special foods and like some of their, I mean, they have like these gluten-free um, chicken nuggets and I'm like 
this is good. And, you know, they say, Papa, can you come eat with me? And well, most of the time we, you know, we feed them as healthy as possible. And I'm like, yes, I'm like, absolutely. I'm going to enjoy that because, you know, most of the time I'm, you know, I'm an 85% healthy, 15% fun. Like I give myself that freedom and that space to like eat and have fun. But I just love that you say that because it almost, I see so many people out there preaching food, 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 preaching, you know, this is the only way to be. And there are some people that may eat that 100%, but they're, but then I hear this, those same people are like, oh, I let myself go. But you're also like trying to like jam this way of life down somebody's neck and be like, if you're not eating like this, you're not eating the right thing. And I'm like, wait a yeah. minute, but where's the balance? No. Um, and one thing, uh, first of all, for being an athlete, I was around there with friends. I've seen many of my friends struggle hard with disorder eating patterns. Um, and even full transparency, when I started learning about eating the right foods, like I'm Puerto Rican, I still eat rice often. Like to me, the idea of like, wait, bread is bad. Like I, when I started learning about nutrition, but I had moments that I had too much education. And then I started seeing like the good and the bad foods and I have memories of being at Disneyland with my kids and being like, Oh, everything here is gross, like feeling that way about food. So then it took me to kind of like unlearn a little bit about the diet culture to kind of like finally get to that balance too. Um, but it's hard. And my motivation to eating healthy is wellness, like physique, because I'm Puerto Rican and all my, and they, they're fine. And my husband has seen me at, even at 180 pounds or more, like he still loves me. Like it's not even the, it's not enough <laughs> that looks hard, but it is the wellness because I, I did struggle to some things. But I also have three daughters, three daughters that I'm raising to be like strong, that I don't want them to ever be like seeing food in a weird way. I don't want my daughters to feel like if they're eating a donut or pizza or whatever, that they feel guilty about it. So I've tried to be very mindful um, about that. And um, I don't even think, and people might not believe this, I've never even done a photo shoot that I've done a diet. And it's not even that I don't have the discipline because I'm like, yeah, I, I, I sometimes I wonder, I'm like, I would love to see what I'm able to, my full potential if I do macros and things like that. But then yeah. I'm like, it's just like, yeah, I might look really good there, but then they might see me in real life and I don't look like super, super caught. So I feel like, why? And the few times that I try to kind of like diminish it, I noticed myself wanted the bad foods even more. So it's definitely not an approach that works for me. It works for some people. That's amazing. As long as you can still enjoy your life. But I have three girls. I rather, I don't know, maybe just be that flexible and, and they still know how to exercise. They see movement. I have an athlete, a daughter that is an athlete. So she just is too much. She, I have to be like, can you just sit down to watch TV? And she's always like, if you guys see how she watches TV, it doesn't even make sense. She's always like bending. She's like a cortana. Cort 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 she has like, she will do the most random things. She's always doing hand sand and all these things. Um, my oh, contortionist. Contortionist, yeah. Contortion. She's always doing like the weirdest thing. And she's just like me as a kid, but on steroids. And uh, so with <laughs> her, I'm like, she's a big eater too. I'm like, okay, Vale, like it's all about. You have to feel your body. It's all about the performance. Like, I don't want you getting injury, but of course I let her eat her, her, you know, her favorite food too. I have a almost 15 year old daughter, um, with her, the way I approach movement is different. She doesn't really enjoy exercise, but she knows like she's to balance her hormones, to get better peers. Okay. Let's do strength training 20, 30 minutes a day, three times a week. And she does it. And she loves like she has her own barbell, her little things, um, her nutrition, like with her is more about like, yeah, like pull your body, but, and she eats, she actually eats like a, like a lot, like a truck driver, like they said in Puerto Rico, but I'm not <laughs> going to be like, Hey, you're eating too much. Like, no, like I, I educate them, uh, about mindful eating and things like that. But we need to be very, very careful about how we talk food out in front of our kids, um, because that sticks with them and the same, I um, mean, your mom out there, the way that you talk about yourself, about your body, about any other female's body in front of your daughters, um, the things that we said about their bodies, like those are things we cannot underestimate the damage that it can do a, a little comment here and there. Like I know I never grew up here listening to any of my aunts, my mom ever saying something positive about their bodies. So mm. since I can remember, I was always very self-conscious about my body. That's not something that you grew up with. It's, it's an environment. It's things that you hear. Um, people, friends saying, oh, she's too skinny. She's too that. So I feel like in order to change that, like it has to start with us. Um, 
unlearn all that noise that we hear about diet culture and about those extreme ways that obviously they do not work and, uh, and, and put our part in our daughter's life for them, like empower them with movement. Yes, have nutrition knowledge, but flexibility. And one of the weird things, I might be weird because I've never met other mom. Like I've had every other mom, every other month, I always remind that I'm like, and they have never been involved in drama. I'm like, I will never want you like hear you say anything negative about any of your friends. If you are here gossiping, you walk away from them because it's like all these little things that can affect other girls like self-esteem. And, and I always tell them like, you should never critique or any other girl's body. Like, and they're like the most body positivity person that you, that you meet. So <laughs> I think like, you know, it's possible like, but it starts with that to kind of like make that impact so that it changes that I know you're doing your part though amazing too with the whole like uh lifting women up and I think that's just like I am Mario Tons for that well thank you thank you for sharing all that you know because I feel like even me like I just got a lesson in parenting because you know we do have conversations around our kids and we celebrate like I said before we celebrate donut Fridays like even last night like almost accidentally got our kids drunk because we thought they were getting eating, they were getting lemonade from this place and it was actually margaritas and I was like oh my god but then you know we sat down and they're like you know, I know. So we sit down at the table and, and, you know, they're like, Papa, Dada, why do you get salt on your glass? And we're like, we're having the adult drink. And they're like, why can't we have that? And we're like, you're young. <laughs> but they see us, they see us eat that, but then, and drink that and like have a good time with them and eat donuts. But in the morning, you know, we're like, hey guys, you have to start your day off with water. So like hearing you say that about your kids, knowing that they're different, one likes to move and be a contortionist, the other one doesn't, it really helps you know, me and probably other parents out there to to find that balance because, you know, I have this joke that I say to Scott all the time and we feel like, oh my gosh, like, are we saying the right thing or doing the right thing? I'm like, our parents tried the best we could and we still got to go to therapy. I think everybody, they're going to have to go to (laughs) therapy anyway. Uh, I asked yesterday, (laughs) my oldest, um, my little child, she's amazing, but she's more like me. We're both like stubborn and, and, uh, and, I don't think I'm hard on her at all. It's just like, if I don't discipline her a little bit more, she has the potential to be like, whoa, go to the other way. Like I did at some point. And I was telling me, I'm like, Mia, do you guys ever just like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we bond over talking about you. <laughs> kind of like saying, you, but she's like, but it's not that bad. It's just like, no, yeah. things. But I'm like, I can totally relate to that. That's part of like, parenting is the most hard thing in the world like all we like uh, the thing that gives me peace at night is that like knowing okay like I tried my best I have the conversations that I wish somebody will have with me mm-hmm. but this age like I don't put shame on them whenever we're talking about sex about anything in life like I'm very very honest and vulnerable they see me like failing and try they like I've never put just a facade so I'm very raw and real which is not always it's that that's not not every mom has to be that way by the way it's just my style but I feel like okay I'm doing my best there's no way that I'm gonna do it perfect they might need some therapy here and there but it's not gonna be worse than how I had it <laughs> and that's yes. what we do <laughs> well you know it's so it's so cool um because you know just hearing everything you're saying I mean this is just like overall wellness and yeah. just your your take on Uh, what's most important, which is the way you actually communicate. Because I think a lot of times parents, you know, we hide things. Oh, let me say this first. Me and my brother used to talk so much shit on my my mom. We used to be (laughs) up in the bedroom. Be like, she get on my, look, she get on my mother bleeping nerves, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, we are, and you just reminded me that if I ever overhear Sides and Sandra talking about me, just to just walk the other way, because I did it too. It's funny, it's relatable. (laughs) Okay. But I'm so right, like, but we're still right. talking right. to the wall, but I'm right, just kidding. Just so you yeah. know, I'm right. But um, just, just the overall wellness from food to conversation and mindset. communication, mindset, and, you know, overcoming struggles. So thank you for that. All right. So with the time we have left, I have to tell you a secret that I don't even know if you know. And we have to fix this because I had another guest. I had another guest from Puerto Rico about a year ago, and I still have not been to Puerto Rico. Oh come ever. on! It is so this is- fun and beautiful, and it's like well, I don't know from Arizona, that's a little longer. 
Oh, it is a beautiful place. You should go out. <laughs> It's I beautiful. know. I want to go. So I have so many friends who put. I have like you know plenty, and I just like of all the places I've been in the world, I've never been there. So while I know Joel is trying to plan this like trip to Mexico, this other woman, her name, we interviewed her, uh, Jen on a jet plane. She does like a lot of like travel stuff, and you know. But anyway, I just need to go, and maybe one day. We'll go there together. Anyway, before we end, I just want to know your definition of trust and believe, because obviously you've overcome a lot and you definitely have had to find ways to trust and believe in yourself. So the, my definition of those two words, um, trust, yeah, and believe, trust and believe, I feel like it will go in like two different areas. Three. I want to, I don't know why those things that just come to mind. First of all, with God, uh, myself after, well, yeah. Um, but for me has been the, God has always been the thing, like, even when I was a child going through the darkest of moments, it was that faith, like, and hope that, you know, he's listening, he will make my life, you know, and I feel like it's definitely happened. Like I have the family I always even dream I will ever had a husband that loves me, like a functional marriage, um, a, a happy life, uh, and believe that belief in that trust in what he said. And obviously then myself, which has, was something that it was just harder, um, cause I didn't grow up in the best environment, but the definition has been for me to, to just go for it, to trust in my potential, um, and realize that my good, that my best is good enough to kind of mm. like ignore those voices in my head. Um, and that belief that, uh, at the end of the day, what happens um, I'm doing, I'm living my life with my purpose. And that's also the things that I try to like, I'm being the best wife that I can be. Um, that relationship around myself, they continue to get better. And that's just something important. And when I, and I truly believe that, um, believe in that the work that I'm doing with my daughters and my home in the fitness industry is helping people. And that, those are the things that comes to mind right now. Like, um, I don't know if that's what you were looking for. No, maybe yeah, that's, that's maybe great. I got lost in translation, but those are like those things that I, I don't know, trust in God, trust in my potential, um, trust that my best is good enough. Whenever I'm doubting myself on any new project, which I've done really crazy things <laughs> in the, <laughs> you know, in my line of work, and uh, anyway, and believe that it is, it, it will pay off. I love it. I love it all. You know, all of our guests have different ways of trusting and believing. And, you know, it, it's funny because, you know, you say God and whenever you, if you Google trust and believe, a lot of things that actually come up is like religious stuff because it's okay. definitely something that's like said in ch church, like, and um, <laughs> so it is, it's, it is very much so. Uh, so thank you for that. Okay, my last and final question. So I just told some, I just told my friends and people that live here, I was like, you know, I I can do cardio all day long. Like if somebody challenged me to run, I would run. If you challenged me to do like high intensity cardio, I, I can do it. But I was like, it's really hard for me to lift every day because I'm not necessarily, I'm such a mover. And you have amazing, you just have crazy genes then. Like you have amazing <laughs> muscle. Yeah. But I do like body weighted stuff, but I yeah. really want to, and I, you know, I have, I have lifting workouts that I do, but I was just telling Elliot, um, my apparel manager, I was like, I really need to lift weights. And then just talking to you, I'm like, oh my gosh, I should ask Dallas, which of her workouts I should do the ones off the treadmill because cardio is easy for me. So like, if you could give me three workouts that you're like, do these, like, which one should I do? Because uh, <laughs> they are yeah, in their tub. I really want to like one of this, uh, lower body one, any of the okay. lower body. I'm, I'm actually they're, writing these down in my notes. They're, they're very different. I only have like two lower body workouts. One is uh, the lower body one. The other one is re relentless legs. Relentless leg is more like endurance, like single leg endurance, but I think the other one, you, you like it, over body one or oh any of the upper bodies, and then metaburn, but because that's really cardio, cardio-based. But I have a feeling that your favorite, but it's all body way, might actually be rainy day cardio, which actually I hate it with my soul. I have PTSD from filming that at Curl's Ranch. You know that it gets hot, and I was getting burned by the mat. So at some point, I was doing like fist being in the plank and burger position and people might think, wow, she's hardcore. I'm like, no, but it was just 
horrible. And then I, we were doing everything in both languages. It was like back to back. And I'm like, I don't think I've done that workout. Like I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Wow. Well, you had it rough too. You were filming. You guys were like, tanned <laughs> yeah oh my goodness i got so dark yeah. out there it didn't even matter how much spf you put it just it did no, not exactly. matter it was just like so lower body one upper, upper body. body one and meta burn is weights too yeah meta burn is like a little math con yeah it's more like okay. yeah all you, right you'll so like i'm it. gonna and do it's super yeah. short and then if for some reason I'm recommending the upper body and lower body one because the second version is like some combos. If you like some combos, then my husband loves upper body too. I like it a little more simple. I like the first one, but they're like simple to the point. And yeah, and my husband got like really good results with those, yeah. No, I mean, I've done the workouts before. I was just, yeah, no, they're great. They're so good. Thank you. Dallas, thank you so much. I thank appreciate you, you taking the time. Thank you for having me. And hopefully we'll see each other in... Tulum yeah, let's talk. Let's have some margaritas and <laughs> go to dance for real. I'll show you how to dance reggaeton. Not that you need to, but <laughs> no, come on. Like we, like I can't wait. We can make some TikToks, some reels. We're gonna be messy and fun, and I can't even wait. Thank you, Chanti. Wow, bless you.